The haircut chatting with Lee Bennett, who joins us today as our sideline commentator. Lee, the former Balmain right Eastwood skipper, filling in for uh, Drury Forbes, who's unavailable this weekend. And the Magpies take to the field a joint venture with the Parramatta Reels. Fantastic atmosphere here today. It's overcast, cool conditions. Good afternoon, Peter. Good afternoon, uh, David. And uh, to Lee Bennett on the sideline too, welcome, Lee. It's great to have you on board. Match this afternoon, a host of first-grade players in this side this afternoon. Both teams are littered with them. I'll be very interested to see how Josh Morris goes from the Canterbury Bulldogs. You know, Jimmy Dimmick last week uh, waved the big stick and uh, put Josh back to regain some of his form. You look at the side that Canterbury boasts this afternoon, a host of players with first-grade experience. Referee is John Stone for this round 20 clash. And in this first half, you'll find that the Bulldogs of Canterbury will defend the southern end of Ringrose Park. We now wait for Bryson Goodwin to get the game underway. Does so now, and deep into Wentworthville territory. The ball fielded on this occasion by Ken Seo. Magpie's left winger returns the footy and is put on the ground by Daniel Rabacava for Canterbury. Now the youngster surges onto the football in jumper eight, Penny Terrapo. And now this is O'Hanlon, who's had some starts for the Eels in the NRL in recent weeks. From Hunt away at this time to Carl Webb with the beard. And he's put on the ground there by the Bulldogs' Tim Brown and also the back row, Gary Warburton. Matt Hunt, a little bit of indecision at acting half there. He goes to Aaron Fluke, and now the ball goes right to Carl Feliga. Flicks it inside to Matthew Ryan, a former Tiger. And he's put on the ground on the last tackle. He'll play it back to Hunt. What will Wentworthville do? Aaron Fluke, a grubbing kick through to the southwestern corner. And Michael Lett lets it go in touch in goal. And a reasonable set. Not a spectacular ending, though, Peter. No, it wasn't, but it was a good set, too. I think Brett Cook would be pretty happy with that. Good quick play, the balls there from the uh, early tackles of the, uh, the Wentworthville Magpies. Well, you know, I think that's all he could expect in that first set of six. Nathan Swift playing 5-8 today for Canterbury. Fed that scrum. We've commented on it before in our coverage of the New South Wales Cup. He can play a multitude of positions with ease. Tia Khalifi then took the hit up, and this time it's Corey Payne on the ball. Not the 13. And whilst we watch Canterbury hitting it up from their own danger zone, their own danger zone. Early in this game as Brown as tackle will take this opportunity to go downstairs to the sideline. And former Balmain right Eastwood skipper Lee Bennett with us filling in for Drury. Thank you, David. Well, it's a little bit chilly down here on the sideline. Uh, we've got some damp conditions. The, the ground is a little bit spongy underfoot. But it's a decent crowd here. Uh, the under-20s Parramatta and Bulldogs game was moved here pre uh, pre game to the uh, state cup and um, we have a decent crowd and it's a family fun day. Went with Phil are doing a great job here with the, the, the jumping castles and whatnot for the families in the background. And how do you see the match going today, Lee? You've um, you've faced these sides on numerous occasions in the past. Well, both sides have plenty of NRL experience amongst them, but uh, I am tipping the Bulldogs. Uh, they do come in as favourites and are leaders in the competition. Yeah, hard to see. The Bulldogs being overcome this afternoon as we see Joseph Paulo struggling to play the ball. So eventually, then from Hunt, that went back this time to Matt Ryan hitting the ball at pace. It was a good tackle too by Corey Payne. Now another kick over the top, no pressure there whatsoever. And Bryson Goodwin says thank you very much. Takes the ball, takes the tackle of Aaron Fluke. That was a poor end to a pretty good set of six once again from Wendy. They're making good yards through their forwards and uh, I'm quite sure that a different result would have occurred with a higher kick. A little bit more pressure on the, uh, the Canterbury back three. Here's Josh Morris playing it. What a welcome addition he is to uh, the Canterbury New South Wales Cup squad today. A junior tier Khalifi goes for another run by Terrapo and two others including O'Hanlon and now Canterbury's halfback Trent Cutler I had to look twice then he does look different without the curly locks doesn't he? he looks like Daniel Rebecca oh Daniel Rebecca Carver looks like him now I don't know what they do with these afros but they they keep changing uh, Corey Payne there got the pass away to Grant Millington some second phase albeit a little bit scrappy from the Bulldogs this is Shane Pummerby trying to bustle his way through heavy traffic but we saw their hunt come across the top and affect the tackle, along with Aaron Fluke. Now back to Smith. It's a kick downfield and taken on the full by Ken Seo. And he's taken quickly by two Canterbury defenders. They drive him back. Gary Warburton led the charge along with Tim Brown. 
This is Chris Hicks. Speaking of NRL experience, a host of games at the top level. He's been in the New South Wales Cup team here for a number of weeks in succession now. Savage plays it from Hunt. Man in 18 is Carl Webb. Now Mortimer. A dummy got the pass away to Rawa Louie and now out to CO. He looked inside, passed to the wrong football team though and got his foot into touch at the same time. Good pass selection there from Mortimer and enabled his winger just to get in front of the, uh, or outside of Junior to Califi, just facing in to Califi there and a good pass also from uh, Ray Walui. And the defence coming at him in the shape of Tia Califi and foot into touch on the eastern side of ground. You see a scrum pack now, it'll be a Bulldogs loose and feed. On the sideline is Lee Bennett. Wentworthville's uh, last tackle options have have been a little lacking early in this game, Lee. Yeah, definitely uh, not a, a high-end finish for them going out over the sideline. But um, they're looking a little bit dangerous down that left-hand side. Yeah, you'd think they've uh, spent some time looking at some videos and their coach has told them to aim their attack at Canterbury's right-hand side defence. Tim Brown playing in front of the line. Found Grant Millington coming back on an angle. Saw there Matt Ryan around the legs. And Paulo also in the tackle. Here's a great run. Chris Armand. That's how you do it. Head down and well and truly got over the advantage line. Now Pumapi to Cutler. And he got the pass back on the inside. And this is good metres by Canterbury. They apply pressure to Wentworthville. Nice kick over the top. And that will go into touch a couple of metres out from the northeastern corner post. That's a better six set of six there from the, the dogs too, and a good kick there through from Trent Cutler playing in the halfback role this afternoon, as you said, with Reynolds and Romolo being up in uh, the NRL on uh, a Friday night and played quite well both players. But Trent Cutler, no stranger to playing in the halves, of course, David. No, it'll be comfortable for him. Went will feel loose and feed. Ten out from their own line. This is the centre, Troy Savage. Hasn't had a bad season actually. Millington, the tackler, along with Nathan Smith. We've got some big boppers too to come into the game off the bench. The likes of Manu Kafoa and Pelita Lisi. If they can get a roll on, they can be dangerous. Here's Webb trying to consolidate himself in the Parramatta NRL side. He's played a lot of New South Wales Cup in 2011. Now Feliga. And Feliga confronted by Josh Morris. And also Nathan Smith. Now, Matt Hunt, Mortimer through the hands, Joseph Paulo. Paulo straightens up the point of the attack and on the ground by three Bulldogs. He'll play at centre field. And here comes the kick from Mortimer down towards the southeastern corner. One bounce and into touch. Michael Lett wasn't overly concerned. It'll be a Bulldogs scrum feed. You just talk about that bench, David, with, uh, and you see this great little kick here from Mortimer too. was always going to... Uh, proved to be quite dangerous for Canterbury over that over that uh, touchline. Menya Kafoa, Danny Howard, Nathan Armit, and Pella Talese obviously on the bench. Lee, was there any indication that Nathan Armit wouldn't start? Is there a reason behind that that Brett Cook might have suggested or did uh, Nathan mention it himself? No, I, I didn't get any indication that Nathan was on the bench. So um, I, I did his interview um, pre-game and um, yeah, no, it wasn't spoken about. Obviously a, a tactical ploy there because they've got some big boppers, as you said, David, coming off. Yeah, no shortage of size. That is definite. So no score here after eight and a half minutes of play. Pumapi, some second phase, pass away. This is Cutler trying to explode into space. It comes back now to Tim Brown. A lot to like about the way this man runs the football, Brown. He gets ahead of steam up. He is scary to watch. Be even more scary to tackle. Here he is, uh, Armit now. And found himself in the centre of the ruck with the footy. Did well. And it's a little bit of hot potato at the moment on behalf of the Bulldogs. Nathan Smith is tackled. Now Pumapi to Millington. One-handed offload to Michael Lett. He's a speed machine. If he can get into the clear and did well. Got the pass back to Millington. Bulldogs looking dangerous at the moment. Went with full of head held firm. For the first nine minutes, can they keep them out again? A kick through by Trent Cutler. Back on a reverse angle. Getting back there, Matt Hunt. And Hunt tackled about five out from his own line by Grant Millington. Just a little bit scrappy, the dogs. I think there's more control from the uh, 
the Wentworth Hill side than I've seen in the, the few sets from the Bulldogs. Uh, it's obviously the case too when you've got a lot of players that do play a, a handy second phase play with uh, Millington, Corey Payne, um, you know, even Gary Warburton plays a little bit with the football. So just need to settle down a little bit, the Dogs, I think. Now they're going wide, Wentworth Hill early in the tackle count. Paulo throwing a long pass, which went out onto the left flank with CO. And there's an almost a mistake. Pat O'Hanlon cleans it up for Wentworthville. Advances the steed in about another five metres. Now the kick coming up. Daniel Mortimer. He was harassed by the marker defence. Ball lands into the waiting arms of Bryson Goodwin. Back he comes and there's a crunchy tackle by Carl Webb. Possibly the last bloke on the field you'd run straight at. Michael Lett. Matt Hunt around the legs. O'Hanlon watchful across the top. This is the big man, Tim Brown, that I was referring to. Your thoughts on him, Peter? Oh, good kid. And, you know, he's come back from a couple of bad knee injuries and uh, we're just looking now to extend his contract. He's, he's basically agreed to terms for the next two years, which is great. Um, just really impressed with Chris Armit this afternoon. He's back in his familiar role as a front row. As you just see here, once again, a mistake from the dogs. Gary Warburton trying to push one out and, uh, you know, just a little bit too late there, Cutler ball away just too late. I'm really, really been impressed with Nathan, uh, with Chris Armit in these last three or four matches I've watched and you know, he must be going close to, to coming into a first grade spot, especially with injury there the other night to uh, Martin to Power as well. There's an unfortunate mistake for Wentworth Phil. Uh, well, Louis had the football and couldn't handle, so Canterbury, when they least expect it, straight on the attack, 25 metres out. Here's another look at it. It was a set play involving a decoy runner and Rao Louis, there's no doubt he knew he was getting the ball, but he still didn't catch it. He was entitled to. Lee, that was right in front of you. Your thoughts? Yeah, I thought it was an easy catch. I think he, he took his eyes off the ball for a split second. Agree. He had a look where he was going to run. So here's Canterbury now applying the blowtorch to Wentworthville. Millington, a couple of metres out. Corey Payne, a dummy, and then goes down the short side. He'll go close, Payne. The ruling is he's held up on tackle four. He'll be told to go back 10 metres. So Wentworth Phil's defence holding firm there. Yeah, Corey Payne just a little bit too high there too. And good defence over the top from the, the number 14 Aaron Fluke there just to make sure that he didn't uh, put that ball on the ground. Open side go the Bulldogs. Cutler looking for an inside runner. Found it in Michael Lett. Got away almost from Matthew Ryan. Ryan came again. Was assisted by Aaron Fluke. Pumapi. Now Smith. A kick that Rawali is having all sorts of trouble handling. Did well in the end. He had to put his body on the line. And came up with the desired result. But Wentworthville on the rack here. They've been posted in their own 20 metres for an extended period. Now Ken Seo goes for an a darting run from acting half. So no score after 13 minutes of play. I think it went nine and a half minutes this match without a single error, a handling error, error I mean, and Wentworth will have made two in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, that puts pressure on themselves, especially with a side like Canterbury that don't mind throwing the football around as well, and second phase becomes a real issue for them. There was a one-on-one -on -one strip there, and it ended up coming back to Carl Webb after losing it initially. Here's Joseph Paulo now, storming downfield. Got the pass away to Rara Louie. Here it is again, that strip. Smith... Good now, good now. Oh. Yeah, he got it there. It wasn't really a strip, was it? It just fell out and he grabbed it and lost it and Webb got it back again. Yeah, it's not, you know, you can't argue with that call, but playing direct, they're looking very, very strong, Wendy. Here's young Taripo, uh, Paddy O'Hanlon, Carl Webb, making good metres up the middle. So here they go. Mortimer had a bit of time too. Linked up with Aaron Fluke, the big dummy, and sets up his outside man, Matthew Ryan. It was well read in defence, though, by Josh Morris. Now, Mortimer does well, picks it up around his boot laces, then dummies to Matt Hunt. He takes the tackle, he is flung to ground there by Corey Payne. Looking for a quick play, the ball wasn't really forthcoming. Fluke to the line, a little kick in behind them, it's a good one too. It's been forced though by Canterbury's Michael Lett. It'll be a line dropout. That's a great result there for the Maggies, and you can just see a good little kick there from Aaron Fluke. I think he's right on his game today. And good, oh, forced the football there, Joshy Morris. Good cover too from Michael Lett. 